In today's episode, I'm starting the wiring of my T-Track modules. At this point, it is still a rough concept, but I will show you my current progress. The goal of this project is to build a complete loop of track that I can set up and take down in a day that will allow me to run trains with DCC. Welcome to Humanity Junction, where the city intersects with humans. Before I get into today's video, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the 500 plus people that have subscribed to my channel. I never imagined that I would get to this point and I really appreciate everyone that watches and comments on my videos. I also really want to say thank you to all the larger YouTube channels in our very small niche that have given me a shout out, made really nice comments about my video, and have encouraged other people to check out my channel. I really appreciate that you are using your hard work building your YouTube presence to support smaller channels and helping them grow. Once this video is uploaded, I'm going to start on my contest entry video for 500 subscribers. Please keep an eye out for my next video in a few days. But first, before I get into the wiring, I need to repair one of the modules that I previously built. During the original build, I did not use enough glue on the longer seams and I did not provide enough pressure for them to set up properly. Therefore, I am now going back and trying to add more glue into the split. After getting in as much glue into the seam as I reasonably can, I just decided to run a bead of wood glue along the inside corner. While I know this will not really glue the two pieces of wood together, due to the minimal forces on the seams, I figured it would minimally help. If I have further issues with these seams, I will add thin CA glue into the gap. After doing the repairs, I added a second layer of cheap black acrylic paint. I am doing this to seal the wood against moisture. I have heard that one recommendation for protecting the wood is sanding sealer, but I do not have any experience with this so I just went with paint. My next step is planning out how I wanted to wire up the modules. I have been thinking about it for a long time and it is still hurting my brain. The wiring for this module setup is still a work in progress. I knew that I wanted to use current sensing block detection but I did not want the block detection device mounted to a single module as this would limit the flexibility of how I interconnected the modules. While this is my current plan for the modules, there are also some variations that can be built. The LocoNet block detection device that I have can detect 16 different sections. Since I currently have eight modules, I'm going to wire the inside track and the outside track of each module as a separate section. While this is more sections than I need, this will give me the most flexibility. I also have two PSX1 circuit breakers. So I will feed the outside tracks, which I'll number one through eight, and the inside tracks, which will be nine through 16, from a different circuit breaker. Although I am planning to wire my modules for DCC, I also wanted to wire them in a way that I could easily rewire them for use in an exhibition. The first thing that I knew I wanted to use for this was lever nuts at each module location. This will enable me to quickly change out the wiring for the tracks from my setup to an exhibition setup. Once I installed all the lever nuts to each module, I then had to figure out how I was going to build the jumpers and actually connect everything together. Mm -hmm. 
Let's take a quick look at how the current sensing device is wired. I am using the Digikai's DR4088LNCS. This is their LocoNet current sensing device. The red wire on the drawing comes out of the command station and goes to one rail of the track. The brighter yellow wire comes out of the command station and goes to the C on the current sensing device. Then each of the outputs on the current sensing device go to one section of the rail, split with insulated gaps between each of the sections. When a piece of rolling stock contacts both rails, either a locomotive or a car that has a resistor between two metal wheels, the current sensing device will detect the drop in current and send a signal back to the command station. This information can then be used in JMRI or other similar software to detect the location of a train. With this current sensing device, it will not detect which piece of rolling stock is in the block, only that there is a piece of rolling stock in the block. Once I installed all the lever nuts to each module, I then had to figure out how I was going to build the jumpers and actually connect everything together. Building the jumpers, I decided to run every wire back to the current sensing device location. This will allow me to have all of my connections and do all of my troubleshooting in one location. I used blue and white wires on the jumpers at each module location to convert from the lever nuts to the Anderson power pole connectors. Blue and white wires are the standard for T-Track wiring. Anderson power pole connectors come as two separate pieces. There is the metal crimp on contact in either 15 amp, 30 amp, or 45 amps. And then there is the plastic housing that includes a piece of spring metal. The first step of assembling the connector is to crimp on the metal contact. Once the metal contact is crimped, you then slide the metal contact into the plastic housing. The hook on the crimp piece of the metal catches on the spring in the connector and holds everything together. The plastic housings are also keyed so that they can be connected together with other plastic housings. For this project, I'm using red and black housings and connecting them as either four wire or six wire connectors. There are several other colors available and you can make the connectors in various different sizes. By building these connectors, it is going to allow me a quick way to connect the modules back to the current sensing device. The first module that I built has a programming track. So for this module, I'm going to build a six wire jumper, two wires for each main line and two wires for the programming track. All of the other modules only have an inside and an outside track, so for these modules, we will have a four wire jumper, two wires for each rail. In a future video, I will show you how I'm going to connect all of the wires from the modules to the current sensing device and then from the current sensing device to the command station. Running trains is coming very soon. Thank you for watching. Please leave any comments or questions below and don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe and select the bell icon to receive notifications. Thanks again and have a great day. Before I get it. Before. I Before I get into today's video, I want to take a moment and. <sighs> Once this video is uploaded, once this video is uploaded, I'm going to start on my contrast. E once this video is uploaded, I'm going to start on my contra contest. Once this video is uploaded, I'm going to start on my contest. With this device, it will not to dis <laughs> With this device, it will not to detect With this <laughs> With this device <laughs> With this
With this device, it will not detect which piece of rolling stock is in the block, only that there is a piece of rolling stock in that section. In a future video, I will show you In a future video, I will show you how I'm going to connect In a future video, I will be show